my friends. I'm still getting situated, getting my earphones, headphones, what, whatever, whatever they're called, <laughs> getting those in. Um, I've got a cute little pup with me today, one of two. Hi, friends. As you guys are coming in, please say hello. We have, as usual, a lot to cover. Hey, Christine. Um, hi, hi, hi. So we've got some really fantastic questions today, and I think um, tis the season for getting all these answers. We're going to cover um, a lot of stuff. Uh, if you don't know where you've landed, I'm Sabrina Gebhardt. I'm a lifestyle photographer of more than 10 years. I live in Fort Worth, Texas, and I come on Instagram every single week, and we do Q&A. These are questions that are submitted from you guys, and it is always a random mixed bag of topics, and it's super fun, and it's also usually fast and furious. So you are more than welcome to comment and ask questions as we are going, but the questions that I'm reviewing today are ones that were asked um, already. So, and I actually do really prepare for these. Um, I write all the questions down. I make notes on what the answers are because I want it to be as value filled as possible because um, you're joining me and I want you to get something out of this. Uh, the first mini session question is, I struggle with keeping mini, se mini sessions mini. Okay. Uh, do you have any tips? So I do. Here's the thing. Many sessions have to stay many or you're wasting your time and giving stuff away for free. It's, it's not profitable. It's not a good business move if you are not keeping them many. That's the whole point. People are paying less and you should absolutely be giving them less. <laughs> if you end up shooting them for a whole hour or if you end up over, over delivering on images by way too many, you are shooting yourself in the foot. You have to keep them as mini sessions. So number one, that's, this is, this right here is a huge reason why profitable and well-run mini sessions are done in a back-to-back -back format. Okay. So if you are trying to offer in-home mini sessions or something like that, where you are literally like telling people you're going to show up for 30 minutes, but then there's nothing backed up to that to force you to stop shooting, okay? That situation will almost always shoot you in the foot unless you are extremely firm with your time. Because here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna get to their house or you're gonna get to wherever it is you're shooting and it's gonna be amazing and you're gonna be having a blast and the light's gonna be great and you're gonna be feeling creatively inspired and so you're just gonna keep going and you're just gonna keep shooting. And then before you know it, you've shot, you know, a thousand images and you're like, I can't get this down to 10. Of course you can't. <laughs> so that is why doing them back to back will really save you because your next client has walked in. You have to stop shooting to take care of them, right? So doing them back to back really will save you. And if you have a huge problem with cutting off a session at the appropriate time, try doing that, okay? Number two, if you really don't like to do people back to back because you feel pressured or you don't like the rigmarole of having all these people in one place and all of that, that's cool. Set a timer, okay? Set a timer on your phone or on your watch and have your phone in your pocket. And literally, when it goes off, you tell them out loud, we have three more minutes and then I need to leave. Like, I, when I do, when I'm in this kind of situation, I literally roll up to somebody's house and I show them, I get out my phone and I'm like, okay, I'm setting a timer for 30 minutes or 25 minutes or whatever. We're going to work fast because when this goes off, time is up. You have to set something in place that will remind you, oh yeah, this is a mini session. I need to get out of here no matter how fantastic this is. Okay. So another part of keeping mini sessions mini is the amount of images that you're delivering you need to stick to what you promise, okay? So if your mini sessions are said to include 10 to 15 images, you need to keep it as close to 10 to 15 as possible or you are just leaving money on the table, okay? You are over-delivering, way over-delivering. It's great to over-deliver, okay, because that's good customer service, but when you are delivering the amount, like the size of a gallery that people would get with a full session and they paid for half a session, that's just not smart, okay? So firm culling, firm culling. When I am culling mini sessions, 
I put on a whole nother set of blinders, okay? If I'm calling a full newborn session or a full family session or a big travel session, I, um, I am a lot more loosey-goosey. I want the whole story to be shared. And if that means that this gallery is twice the size as the last gallery, I'm okay with that because they paid for a full session. With my mini sessions, I am firm, okay? So for that, I, I cut anything that is not amazing, absolutely amazing. And then I will go through and I will cull it again at least two more times to get it as close to the number as possible. I still will over deliver a little bit, maybe by a couple of images, but I am not delivering. If I, if I promise 10 to 15 images, I'm not delivering 40 images. No, no, I'm not. Okay. The other thing if you know that you have a huge problem with culling and you just can't, you just can't even fathom getting it out down to 10 images or whatever you're promising, then raise your prices. Your mini session does not have to be $120 or $75 or $250. Your mini session should be whatever it is that you're going to deliver. If you know that you've never in your life been able to deliver less than 40 images, then oh my gosh, charge the mini session based on what their final product is, okay? Even if it's only a 15 minute session, if you know that you can, that you can walk away with 40 fantastic images in 15 minutes, good for you, charge appropriately, okay? So firm culling and making sure that you are charging appropriately. Uh, and then the last thing is, if all of this sounds great and you're trying to do all of this, but you still find yourself over delivering, then what I want you to do is I want you to create a pricing setup for your mini sessions so that they get to pick a few images and then you offer upgrades. Okay. So um, I do this for one of my offerings. I have a monthly offering called Simply Baby Sessions. And this is something that I am in the studio for two hours, once a month, and my clients can book it anytime they want. Any age between three months and three years, okay? These sessions are not for siblings, unless it's twins, okay? Not for siblings. They are not for family. They are literally for the baby and the mom because I like the mom to be there. That's my own artistic choice. But... These sessions are really inexpensive. They are 20 minute time slots and they are guaranteed, no, they are told that they get to pick five images from their final gallery or they can upgrade and get all the images, okay? So I provide their final gallery that they see is generally 25 to 30 images. 90% of the time they upgrade and buy the whole gallery, okay? But if they're on a budget, that's totally fine. They get to pick whichever five they want, walk away, and they're done. Okay? So that is my way of solving that problem. I wanted to have a low price offering that could get those baby milestones in, that could get me some mommy and me images on the regular because I love to shoot that. But I knew I was always over delivering. So I have set those up as an upgrade. Most of the clients do the upgrade, and so then it ends up being worth my time and worth the 25 images. But the ones that are on a tight budget, which is totally fine, they pick their five and they're done. Okay? So if you are really, really struggling with how much you're delivering in mini sessions, maybe move to an upgrade model. Okay? Um, Lolly, how much markup for the upgrade? So I charge $100 for the upgrade. So they can get 20 plus more images for $100, which is a complete steal. Um, but I've priced it because I want them all to upgrade and uh, it's a no brainer for most of them. So um, my, the, the session fee is 300. So 300 for the time slot and five images. And then if they pay an extra 100, they get the whole gallery. Okay, um, so next mini session related question is, uh, what do I include in mini sessions? Or what could you include in mini sessions? So that is really up to you and you can totally do whatever feels right to you and your brand. Um, my mini sessions, hello everybody, my mini sessions are literally just the digitals. Um, however, you can, you can make it whatever you want, okay? So I will say that while I do only provide the digitals for my mini sessions, the gallery proofing software I use uh, does encourage 
print and product orders. And so I do get a fair amount of um, clients placing accessory print and product orders off of mini sessions, okay? So if you are not already doing that, that is a really easy way to encourage some upselling, okay? Is to use a gallery software that will allow print and product ordering, okay? Um, so you can, uh, what I was just saying about my Simply Baby sessions, you can offer some sort of upgrade situation and that could be to get more digitals, but it could also be to get digitals and a print credit or digitals and a certain amount of prints or digitals and a canvas or whatever. You can create what you want, but here's what I want you to consider. What do your people want? Okay. What does your ideal client really, really want? And if you're not sure, ask them. Do a poll on social media. Do a poll in your next newsletter. Ask them, what would they like to see? If it's holiday time, a really easy um, addition for mini sessions would be a certain amount of holiday cards. And then get them plugged into a gallery where they design their own cards. Um, And then you make a little bit off of that. So uh, that's a really easy thing. You could do a certain amount of prints. You could do a print credit. You could do credit towards an album. You could do... Literally whatever you want, as long as you're making sure that the pricing for your mini sessions covers any costs that you have. But the main thing to remember is what do your people want? Do they just want digitals? That's totally fine. Do they want prints and products? Because if they, if your ideal client loves to have albums or loves to have walls covered with prints or loves to gift family members things, then maybe you should be including something in your mini sessions. So um, as far as what I include, my mini sessions only include digital files um, unless it's the Simply Baby sessions and then they can upgrade, which we just talked about. So options, again, for mini sessions, it could just be digital files. It could be unlimited or a limited number. You could offer them an upgrade to either more digital files or files plus product or files plus print credit. Or you can include, you know, five digital files and a five by seven of each one you know, or something like that. You can literally make up whatever you want as long as you are covering your expenses and offering things that your people want. It's a, it's a win. Okay. So last question, Lolly, I'm glad you're here. Cause honey, we're getting to yours. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the last question is my mini sessions are getting rained out. I'm offering a backup date, but what if folks can't take it? So This is a really hard situation to be in and it is a real bummer and it happens. It happens. And I will tell you right now, this is why I do mini sessions indoors for the past few years because I was tired of the weather reschedules. Um, Sometimes the weather reschedules are because of rain. Sometimes they're because it's way too windy. Sometimes it's because in Texas, it's way too hot. Sometimes it's because it's way too cold. You literally can have weather reschedules for any reason under the sun, and it is a challenge. So here are some options. Um, if, if you've created um, a backup reschedule date and you have emailed it out to the people and a couple of them come back to you and say, oh, I'm bummed that the weather's not cooperating, but we're out of town that weekend or, you know, whatever. Then I would give them, um, I would offer them a credit towards a future session. So um, say, no problem. I totally understand. I can hang on to this and you can have a credit towards a full session. Or if I offer many sessions in the fall, you can just transfer to one of those. So generally people are fine with that because they want to work with you. Um, And so they're fine with having their deposit, um, not forfeited, but transferred. Uh, Another option would, if it's just one or two people and that date does not work for them, maybe just to get it over with, offer them a one-off mini session. Okay. So tell them, you know what, this has been a mess. I want to get you guys taken care of what evening works for you. We'll go to the same location and I'll photograph just you guys. Right. So just bend over backwards to get the session done and off your plate. Is it inconvenient? Yes, absolutely. But you are serving your clients well by giving them what they ask for and working with them with a date. Okay. Last resort is going to be to give them a refund. If they cannot do the date you've offered and they don't want you to hold their deposit for a future session and they don't want to do any kind of one-off date, then just give them a refund and move on. 
it is such a pain and I hope that you don't have to do that and I don't think you're going to, but that should always be the last resort. So I will say, I have some more thoughts on this. Um, a lot of people I have seen, and I made this mistake many years in a row, okay, before I wised up. Um, it does not sound like, Lolly, that that's what you, that this, this is the situation you're in, but I'm just going to throw it out there while we're talking about mini sessions. Um, I have seen many photographers, and I've done this myself, again, um, especially in the fall, they will schedule so many different mini session dates um, that they don't leave room for weather reschedules or illness reschedules or whatever, okay? So they'll schedule every single Saturday. And then what happens if it rains two Saturdays in a row? You have no Saturdays, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so one thing is if you're going to be scheduling like a season of mini sessions, whether it be motherhood or summer or fall or whatever, um, make sure that you block off time in your calendar for reschedules. Absolutely. And I generally will try and block off the same type of date. Okay. So if it's Saturday morning mini sessions, I'll block off another Saturday morning where I will not make plans. I will not book a session. I will leave that open as a weather backup. Okay. Or if it's a Thursday night, you know, sunset sessions, I'll leave another Thursday night open. Um, the other thing is you can always try to move to an indoor location depending on where you are in the country and what kind of availability and what the pandemic rules are, where you are. Um, indoor locations are fantastic. I do all of my mini sessions, almost all of my mini sessions indoors now, and it's so much easier. <laughs> There's air conditioning and pretty lighting and parking and I don't have to worry about it being too hot, too cold, rainy, whatever. Um, so there are so many natural light studios popping up all over the place. Um, there's actually a website and it's escaping me right now. If anybody here is listening and they know what I'm talking about, you can Google like uh, natural light studio rental or something. And there's a whole website um, of nationwide. It's like combined all of the locations that you can rent from. Some of them are homes, like Airbnb type things that you can rent to shoot in. Some of them are um, actual studios for rent, but you can Google that. And I, I came across it uh, like six months ago and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Somebody has pulled all of those locations into one website. If you know what I'm talking about, um, drop it in the comments. Anyways, so um, Lolly, specifically to you, if I don't know when your mini session date is or anything like that, but maybe do a quick search to see if there's any indoor locations near you that you, that are available for the same time and day. Maybe you could just move everybody inside. Um, indoor studios for rent are beautiful places to shoot in. Does it give you the same look as outdoors? No, but it gets people taken care of. Um, and, and I don't know how many minis you're rescheduling. Like, I don't know if it's, four families, if it's 12 families <laughs> or how many, um, peer space. Yes. Jen, Jen's got it. Peer space. That's what I was talking about for sure. Thank you for that. Um, so anyways, when you're scheduling minis, we covered, we talked a lot about mini sessions today, you guys. This, as usual, was fast and furious. Thank you guys for being here. There was so much covered today. If you have questions, if you catch this on the replay, send me a DM, drop a comment. And if you thought this was valuable, would you share it to your Instagram stories and tag me? I love the Instagram community and I thank you for your support. Bye, you guys.